Oh, we're live. It's a Friday. Hopefully the music's working a okay. Uh, almost at the end of lockdown, everybody. Round two, level three. Uh, I'm still in America and it's month five, so, you know, get used to it. Uh, pretty good show today. We've got uh, <laughs> we've got some characters on today's show. We've got some characters. We've got a cu- couple weapons. Actually, they're all weapons. Um, and without, I think what we can do is we could potentially get straight into it because I know it's going to be flipping great. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, bring it into the mix. Tohinadi. How are you, brother? Yeah. Hey, mate. Mate, good. For, a pol- poli- for a politician or ex-politician, you, it's like you've forgotten the memo real quick with what you were supposed to be wearing. <laughs> oh, yeah, bro. You know, I mean, the, the best thing um, about l- leaving um, was I, I hung the suit up. I've, I've worn it about two or three times in about six years. Really? And uh, I, love, oh, I love it, bro. I, I love my beanies. I love my hoodies. I love my skinny jeans, you know. Skinny, mate, yeah. you, you're coming on 60. You can't be rolling the skinny jeans. Jeez. No, bro, bro, I, had, I had some money, and I needed a couple of pair of jeans. So uh, I, I sent the daughters out. I said, bro, just go get me a couple of pair of jeans. And they came up with these black and blue. Um, one of them had holes in them. And I said, I said to myself, what, did you have an accident on the way home? Oh, I so that. good. Um, if you're yep. if you're just tuning in, uh, Toe Henry, uh former member of parliament, how long were you in government for? Like twenty years? Oh, yeah, I had two. I had two t- uh, two turns, one from ninety three to ninety nine. Yeah. Um, then I, got, I was in for six years, out for six years, and then I came back for a nine year stint. Yeah, so about uh, fifteen years. Fifteen years. What was the biggest difference that you learnt from round one to round two in New Zealand politics from the gap between ninety nine and the next? Oh, bro, um, uh, the, the 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 difference was um, the second time I came back, um, uh, I uh, was in a big party, and there were about 50, 57 of us um, MPs. When I went in in ninety three, there was only two of us, and so you, you could actually. Uh, it's easier, I think, working um, on your own or, or just a couple of people, um, and, and that was really good. Mm. Um, how long have you been out of the, the political landscape now? A couple of years? Um, been- yeah, I think two terms now, coming up to mm. – this will be my second term uh, out, so six years. So I've got a, f- a friend who's a builder, and every time he walks into it, because he understands the building world very well – Every time he walks into any room anywhere, he just looks around and he's like, that's wrong. They should have done this. This is, this is <laughs> off. And they, they, have, they have an opinion on it. And snowboard instructors, are ex- uh, those who are really into snowboard instructing, do the same thing. They'll go on a chairlift. They'll look down to the right. They'll see every single person like, oh, they're inclinated a bit too much on the toe side. They're inclinated on the back foot and all this other stuff. Now you've been out for two terms, but you've been in, in the game for 20 years. When you look at the news every day and you see politics and you see how New Zealand's gone in the last two terms, do you feel the same way where you overanalyze it, where you'd be like, oh, they should have been doing this or so-and-so should have done that? Or how do you how do you view politics um, now that you're on the outside? Yeah, I'm I'm um I'm not affiliated to any uh, party, uh, other than I'm gonna vote for the Māori Party, two ticks for the Māori Party. Um <laughs> <laughs> I thought about he's dead in. Um, yeah. but you're right. You know, I'm, 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 I'm like you. I'm like a builder. I'm, I'm like everybody that's uh, sort of uh, been involved in a trade. And when I see uh, people um, in Parliament doing something, I say, well, that's not right. Um, you should have done this. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I don't know whether it's arrogance or it's just your natural inclination to, um, I suppose, correct somebody um, um, that, uh, that may be doing something you wouldn't have done um but at the end of the day hey it's it's their bag they're in there you know it's uh, uh, politics uh, especially this year um with covid mm. um i think it's just been totally about covid and nothing else and and how a government uh tries to look after as many people as they can um with with whatever money they can can scrounge up basically yeah when, when it comes to 2020, it's become clear that 
everything is about COVID because it's directly impacted every single person every single day to the fact where twice now people haven't been able to leave their homes, right? When yeah. you look at the way this thing has played out, how do you think how do you think the government's gone from a local perspective and then a, and then because globally it's it's singing the praises right except for maybe a couple of little sound bites from from Trump but globally everyone's raising New Zealand up locally there feels like with this round two bit there's you know a lot of I guess more prying eyes or there's a bit more sort of resentment or not resentment but the, it feels the tone has changed with the average New Zealander over the last from first lockdown to to now how do you think it's all gone? Yeah, oh, I think I actually think it's um, still pretty, pretty cool, um, and I, and I think that the government has. Ha I actually think the government's done a bloody good job um, in 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 handling every little facet. The second time has been a bit more difficult, although we we we're used to um, uh, the the restrictions that that uh, uh, lockdown three have, have brought. I don't think we'll go back to level four. Um, I think that yeah. New Zealand's, New Zealand's ne the next 12 months is going to be um, L1, L2 or L3, depending on, yeah. on yeah, yeah. whether. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we'll get used to it. I think businesses have to get used to it just as much as, as the community um, has gotten used to it. Yeah, there's, I mean, I, I was planning to, uh, you know, go up north, um, do some work on the batch, uh, you know, um, mow the lawns, blah, 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 blah. Um, and that happened uh, the first time we were in, in lockdown too. So, I mean, I got pissed off. Um, but, mate, I, I, I enjoy um, just being locked up at home. I, I enjoy... Um, only that's because you're sixty with. That's because you're sixty. Uh, yeah, you got a few dollars in the bank. You got options, and you just can piss got, around I on Netflix and do whatever. What? I got dollars in the bank. That's the well, one you've got your I chicken need. coop. You start. You're starting your new. You got your. You got to talk about your Airbnb chicken coop. You got rolling up there, mate. You got your flop in. You got new I've business. I got the mickiest uh, cookie pen coming. Um, it is. It is absolutely amazing, and I've only spent two hundred bucks so far. Um, that will increase when I when I go out and purchase the uh, uh, the chooks, but yeah, I'm all good, mate. I, I can't wait for you to see it. Oh, mate, oh, br bring on! The, I might, I might, the I, might have a, I might live stream the the in, the opening. That's it. <laughs> That's a horrible idea, Toe. Let's let's not do that. Okay. Okay, <laughs> but what cool. you actually, if you wanted to put a little tech layer on it, what you could do get a sim card plug in a power cable live stream it continuously in it but have a call to action click in the live stream to be able to buy the eggs directly which you then ship out and then you can set up your own little, little virtual you know you could you, your freshly farmed eggs and you could sign each egg toe you could you could personalize i could, I could call it's, them it's called an e-commerce business it's a pivot yeah i could call them urban eggs <laughs> they put little faces on it and shit. it's not dumb <laughs> It's not done. A little live stream. Um, let's get back to more pressing issues. Uh, borders. Have we stuffed it up? Or is this no, part I, of the game? I would have gone earlier, mate. I would have gone earlier. I would have locked it all down earlier. Um, at least two weeks earlier. Um, I, I did think they were, the, they were a bit slow. They were a bit, um, I think they were scared of, of the ramifications. Mate, you have to you have to protect your country, and the only way to protect your country is to lock everything down, and so no one comes in um, unless uh, you know they they do a stint in quarantine, and um, and and there's you know there hasn't been too much wrong. I, I, you, you've got a few jumpers, um, you know you've you've got a few um, sad stories. But out of the thousands and thousands and thousands, and I mean that's upwards of forty thousand people, um, we've only had a few. Um, my my, uh, I tip my hat at uh, people at the border. Um, we we can moan about the the around the edges, but mate, we we are in this position because we did go early, and we are in this position um, because. It was it was a team of five million, um, and, and and quite frankly, screw everybody else, you know. And and if, if you have a look at um, you know like Trump, your mate your mate 
over in um, your, your mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! You know it's freaky, eh? You know what would be freaky if he wins. Well, can I mean, we just obviously talking about. The... There you go. Uh, you know, it, um, I think there's a, I think there's a second civil war coming somewhere along the line. Honestly. Well, you know, we we're just talking before before we went on, like just kind of the fundamental difference between the approach as a nation for New Zealand versus America and in America when it's, you know, the United States of America, it's clear that the people aren't united when it comes to this thing. It's very clear yeah. that it's been politicized. It's very clear that it's gone down to if you wear a mask, you represent this, or if you don't, you represent that. Um, very, um, a lot of animosity, resentment, um, negativity, toxicity, just attacking. and it, But it's got very, at what point, um, do you think it will change? And I'm kind of sitting there watching just the cultures of the communities be totally different. Like uh, the energy in New Zealand feels a little different with this next one. There's a bit of, you know, a bit of pushback on the borders and the, and prime minister and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, if you, at a macro, if you look at, you know, Trump's giving New Zealand shit for a big outbreak of nine and then they've got tens of thousands <laughs> per day, you kind of, you know, the game's clearly just a bit different. How would you, in your 20 years of, politics how do you think um new zealand is different to the rest of the world that makes you more proud to be a kiwi like do you how do you feel our process yeah. actually is oh, i i think it's a that's a lot to do with um you know who we are we we sort of know everybody even if we we've never met them before we still have a connection you know it's just like one big one big sort of happy family um that that has a scrap now and then um whereas america is like there's 50 odd states and they are all um they're all different they're it's like 50 different countries you've got yeah. the clash between the, the president um and the governor you know look at look, look um how uh um cuomo and and uh, and trump were sort of battering each other in the early days um, it's unbelievable 180,000 people have died. It really is uh, yeah. a huge number. I mean, I know there's 350-odd million people living in America, and and um, but but I, it's just hard to wrap my head around um, 180,000 dead because, ostensibly because, um, there was no national strategy. There was no national plan. At or unified, here, right? That was the exact piece. It wasn't unified. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And and like Kiwis, um, Maoris, PIs, Pakas, that we all sort of we all sort of move in the same direction. That's why you you've got that sort of team of five million. I mean, yeah, there's some people that uh um totally um think we're doing it the wrong way. Um, but nowhere else in the world is doing it the right way. You know, there's there's no right way, and and it's been interesting looking at some of the uh, the data and docs around the vaccines thing, and because these things it's kind of mutating at different parts of the world. One vaccine for Cat Africa is not actually going to be the same as America, yeah. is the same as Europe, is the same as things. So it's sort of changing. Um, on the kind of subject of that, I was going to ask. You know, I don't know if you've seen um, uh, Game of Thrones at all. Do you are you a fan of the old Game of Thrones, the old right. little? Yeah. Your dragons and, and shit into that. The red, Mate, the red wing. Uh, <laughs> the red, <laughs> you straight to the dead. Mate, how do you write something like that if you're a hunter? you you got to be a nutter I'll tell to you write how. something like a Acid. It's acid. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, okay, so what's, tr what's trickier? So I've got – it's quite interesting. So I'm 35 now. I've got a couple of homies that are like – that are starting to dabble in that political shit. And I've obviously got to meet a few few crew that have been in the game for a while. What do you think is more strategic to try and win? New Zealand politics or if you were a, a character on Game of Thrones? What would be easier? Oh, my Game of Thrones. You reckon? No, no, no bro. <laughs> because New Zealand is so small um, and we've got a, we've got a, a funny old system even though we've got M MMP, um, it's really hard to actually get elected, um, which I suppose sometimes is a good thing. Um, Game of Thrones, mate, it's just rip, shit, or bust. 
Um, yeah. Honestly, you, um, it's like it's like the Manurewa um, uh, basketball team fronting up to um, the Lakers. You know? Yeah. Um, just it, it's just do or die, bro. Just get into it. So I've got a, a I've got a, a young friend who's trying to get into into the political landscape, and what from when you know I'll, I'll talk to you with just like the layers of thinking, and then when you're young, what was the biggest disconnect from if you were a twenty year old trying to get into politics to when you're sixty looking back, and that advice to the twenty year old because there's a lot of there's that lot of kind of first wave naivety to where you think it is, and what I, I'm only pro maybe at the second level where there's a game behind the game. That I'm now aware of, yeah, yeah. like, ah, oh, this is how it works. Ah, oh, it's the ga 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 ga. Ah, oh, but you don't actually yeah. see that until you're in the room. Over from 20 to 60, and if you're that 20 year old, what would you have told yourself? Well, when I first started campaigning, I was just about 33, and um, I, I enjoyed uh, campaigning so much; it was just fun. But like you say, there's a game behind the game, and and you only know that game. If you're successful in the first game, yeah, you know, because like, you know, playing you earn the, the right, hundred percent, because you earn the right to that next table to them, and then all of a sudden you're like, ah, oh, but you've got to earn that's, that next piece in, right? So it's the same in politics, that's right. right? Yeah, that's right. I mean, I, I you you got to you got to win level one to proceed to level two, um, you know, you and 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 when you're at level two, you have an opportunity to clock the game. Um, mm. uh, some do, some don't. Um, some stick around on level two for fifteen years, um, like me. Um, <laughs> you know, it's it's. It, but there are so many games. It's not just another game behind a game. There are all sorts of games behind uh, the one that you're playing, and it's sort of like never ending, um, and it goes on and on and on. And it, so so. Using the Game of Thrones analogy is actually quite good because there's always something happening. There's always somebody or something going on in the background that um, has an effect on where you might end up. I mean, and you won't even know, know about it, and that's exactly right. Like I, yeah, I was saying yeah. to a friend, I was like, "This is like chess versus checkers. The level two crew are at chess, and this is long game macro pieces moving on a board, positioning people with energy and things, and then there's." those young bucks that are naive as shit it's just checkers like i do this and i think that's the game it's like it's actually not but yeah it's it's cool yeah. to he he hear that validated because it's definitely what i've what i've seen anyway yeah it's uh, the, the first three years when you're in there um when, when you finally get there um is a huge experience huge learning curve um if you've had a bit of um sort of community politics and and, and other stuff marae politics maori politics that helps um, um, but and but nothing really steals you. Um, like I said, um, if I was playing in the local um, basketball team and and fronted up against the the, the Lakers, um, I'd be just so stoked to run onto the court um, with King James. Yep. And then, but 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 then you would you would spend the next um, three years trying to figure out how to play the game properly mm. um a lot this i mean politics there's no rules that there's there are no rules you make them up as you go along and if you win um hell great if you lose well too bad out of all the politicians you meet last mini question for you out of all the politicians you've ever met in your life is there one single person who you know that has always been 100 percent truthful to the end and loyal to the t that you could literally count on with your children's life that has never done a single thing that would jeopardize it oh no <laughs> <laughs> no no bro. you answered bro. the question <laughs> yeah yeah i mean I, bro, we're all we're all the same breed mate i mean at the end of the day it's all about um you know, my, my take on politics is you get in, you try your best to get things for those people that elected you um, to better the community, to better the country. And if you get kicked out, oh, well, that's that's life. Um, mm -hmm. But, um, see, I'm, I'm not a long term. I, I don't think 40 years. I think tomorrow. And, yeah. and, and, and most of that may or may not be one of my, my biggest downfalls. 
um, but I, I live for the moment. I live to see what I can do for my neighbour or my community now and tomorrow rather than 30 years time when I'm 90. That's a pretty, pretty good one, man. Um, finally, would you go back in for round three? Have another little crack? Never say never say never say never. <laughs> so are you going to join the Māori party and then try and make the resurgence? Oh no! I mean, I think I've, I've, I've. Um, I think we always think that we could do it again, um, but I'm, I'm now of, of the opinion that I've, I've, I've had my dash, I've had my turn, um, and now let, let's let's see what uh, the younger generation can do, and and how I can support somebody else. That's good, bro. Um, well, we leave to leave you to it. Really appreciate the time, brother. And when when's your when's your sixtieth next month? 29th of September. I'm actually, actually, I'm on my birthday at um, that evening. I'm uh, on, I'm, I'm, I'm part of a debate about weed, about the weed referendum. Ah, cool. Yeah, so, so uh, after that, I'll, I'll most probably um, go on the terps. Get drunk. Okay, at, at least, at least you're honest. Jeez. Um, appreciate your time, brother. Always good yarning, and um, especially from someone from the outside that knows very little about the game. But you know, it's cool hearing the the validation of um, the game behind the game and level one, level two, and you know, shit, twenty years in, in in that political world, you've clearly earned your stripes. So, appreciate you, brother. Good luck with the Airbnb live streaming call to action <laughs> chicken coop <laughs> eggs by the dozen urban urban eggs. <laughs> Evan Eggs. Love you, brother. Talk soon, bro. You too, my bro. You too, my bro. Thank okay. you. I'll give you some claps. I'll give you some claps to, to, to bail out. You got claps? There you go. You get to wait yeah. everyone. Adios. <laughs> good, dude. Uh, the bro, Toe Hennade, <laughs> making in the mix. So good. Jeez, that was good. Um, now, we had a one-minute pitch, and we last week we did one, which was super cool. Uh, this week, the one-minute pitch has not turned up for this for their uh for their slot so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a little special code in the comments if you are watching this right now and you would like your to one minute pitch and jump in um on the show i'm only going to pick one so probably the first person that jumps in i'll do it uh and you get 60 seconds to sell you your business your service your product anything else uh first person to click that link uh you will come in the mix i'll in in uh, let you come right on here. You can go straight for your one minute to talk about whatever you want to talk about. Sell your shit. And I will say, um, if you've filled out the, the application thing and you actually want a spot to do it and you don't turn up for your spot, you probably don't deserve the 60 seconds because it's pretty it's pretty rocky, actually. So what I might do is um, I'll block you from, from this. I'll block you. Um, actually, while someone else jumps up, we may as well um, bring in our next special guest, ladies and gentlemen, uh, another political weapon of all sorts. Would you like? To, I'm going to give you some claps to come in. Holes. Here we go. <laughs> you Wave to the fans. Wave to the fans. Uh, you bro toe on the Terps on the 60th. I love it. I love it. Honestly, he's one of my favorite politicians ever. Dude, he's is so loose. It's yep. epic. He just yep. says it how it flipping is. It's awesome. Yeah. Like he needs to. I've got a friend in the um in the corporate world and he's so classic but he's got he's obviously still got a role and i said mate if you could just create an anonymous twitter feed for the stuff that you're actually saying it would be <laughs> insanely like amazing toe seems yeah. like the dude who could easily do that with politics because when there's no sides on on all of it it would be good um sorry ladies and gentlemen holly bennett how are you <laughs> i'm good thank you how are you uh a okay so let, let's actually do this first mm -hmm. Uh, feedback on Toe's interview in the political game. You know, how, how, how do you feel? Could you, you feel see me? In, in, Could you see me uh, in the waiting room? I can, but I was looking. I was looking up here, not down there. But I, I think was you can, yes. cracking up, honestly, every <laughs> because I just think that he, when you talked about that sort of honesty aspect, I truly appreciate that in politicians. There's a number of them in there right now who are considered, you know for want of a better term, loose with the way that they say things. I love it because when you know where politicians stand on things and it's not about posturing, they just say what they think and they shoot from the hip. I really appreciate that because it means that they know that their value set is what's driving that reason for them saying that and they won't 
they won't quiver. It's just, that is what it is. And there's a number of them in parliament like that right now too. And I appreciate that, um, you know, that candor, it really is would, valuable. Would Would you agree that he's right around the thinking of level one, level two, game behind the game, political game of Thrones stuff? From what you've seen, you obviously a young buck on the come up, but you've been able to be in, be inside the beehive, understand how it works from, from the inside out. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Agree? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, it would be futile for my political career to um, disagree with Tohinari. So I'm not going to do that, especially not on Rebet Live. <laughs> but what I would say is that what he said about, um, you know, is that if getting through that first stage level one campaigning to get in to be in parliament 100% resonates with me. So the reason why I went to work in the beehive was because I got... Um, really good advice from another stalwart within politics, which was John Banks. And he said to me, if you're interested in politics, if you like it, go and work in a minister's office and see what it's really like. And so I thought, so okay. So I did. And it mm. was, because what you see on TV is not at all what is actually going on behind the scenes in terms of like the long hours, the things that you're having to navigate, the fact that, like, for this government, they've got um, uh, three, three, three parties in the um, coalition. So they're having to navigate a whole bunch of things that none of us see. And, um, mm. yeah, that, I thought that, that was such sage advice. And so I took it. You know, when someone like John Banks gives you advice like that, you listen. And if you don't, well, don't at your own peril. And it's absolutely the reason why um, I'm able to do what I do now you know, which is have a mm. career as a lobbyist. You owe John a cup of tea. Oh, I think um, more than a cup of tea, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, more than a cup of tea. Yeah. What's the most, uh, this week in politics, yes. a lot of stuff bubbling. What's the yes. biggest thing that you've seen this week that needs to be talked about? Okay. So I have it and I've written it down. Um, oh, jeez, you've because... got notes. Watch out. Yes. See. Okay, go, go <laughs> Well, it's it. actually on a bank statement. <laughs> Because I saw it and I wrote it down and I thought, okay, Rebecca and I need to talk about this. Um, Hit me, go. It is from a political party policy platform and it is the sentence, only half of all businesses are cash flow positive at any one time. Hmm. Okay. Would you like me to elaborate? Yes, please. So... We have this rhetoric that's used in this country that 97% of small our businesses are SMEs and they're the backbone of under our 20, Under 20 staff, yes. Yeah, so we're going 97, but the, the, the talking point favoured by politicians of all stripes is 97% <clears throat> of businesses in Aotearoa are SMEs and like, you know, small business is the backbone of our economy. The thing that scares me with the sentence, only half of all businesses are cash flow positive at any one time, shows just really how fragile our small businesses are. Because then we're talking about 50% of our small businesses, which equate to our backbone of our economy, are teetering so on the verge. 40... Ah, yeah, so if you read it the other way, 48% of all of New Zealand business is cash flow negative. Mm -hmm. And that oh. is why we have, that is why we have the situation that we have right now where businesses that cannot operate and they're forced to not be able to operate for a wider reason, um, as we all understand, um, are finding it so difficult. And if you remember back three or four months ago, there were some comments made by uh, the chair of the Economic Select Committee, Deborah Russell, and her comments were around the viability of small these businesses that are finding it hard and whether or not they're viable or not. And they were probably a bit tone deaf at the time because businesses had no choice. Mm. Yeah, she got businesses, steamrolled by a bunch of crew. Yeah. Absolutely. But the thing that sits in behind her commentary is what that this talking point says is that at any one time, 48% of businesses are cash flow negative. And that's a really scary, um, that's a really scary 
statistic. That's something that we all need to think about because that means that if we're going to be dealing with COVID for, you know, 12 months, 24 months, 36 months, we actually need to think now, what are we going to do to turn this around? Because we can't keep shoveling taxpayers' dollars into businesses. Um, And it's a much wider conversation about the robustness of um, maybe our business acumen. And I'm not saying that... the realities of the fragility of the current system as well, right? Yeah, and and not necessarily... And and is it the system? I'm not sure. Um, We do... We we often talk about how easy it is to start a business here in Aotearoa, and that is a great thing. I think the less arduous it is, the better. Um, But sort of what we need to also be cognizant with ourselves of what are the outputs that those businesses are creating and if they're literally having the same experience as many households do in this country too where they're having to live month to month we need to think about how we build our business uh, capability in my view very solid uh and it's i think it's a fair point uh before you go one last question Black Rob Seven would like to know how do you become a lobbyist? <laughs> so um, there's no particular way to do it or not do it. Um, bribes? Is that the answer? No. Oh no! No, no sorry, sorry, no, bribe. no, no, bribe. Sorry. No. Continue. Um, so those of you that are tuned in that know, you'll know my story, which is basically. Um, It was in December 2017. I was sitting with my father in his office. I was sort of on gardening leave because I just left the beehive, so I wasn't really doing anything. And I was thinking about what were my next steps? Do I go back to being a lawyer? And my dad had said, why don't you take the skills that you've got through working in the beehive and turn that into a business? So literally right there and then, I turned around from being somebody who was, in essence, unemployed to being a lobbyist, and it just changed like that. That is not helpful for you, Black Rob. I appreciate that. But what I'm saying to you is that it is and essentially when you wave the magic wand and say, I'm going to be a lobbyist, you can do it. So as my journey's progressed for the past two, nearly three years, self-employed as a lobbyist, the thing that I've noted is that it's extremely hard to get into the industry. There's not a pathway. There's not really any way to assist people to learn the skills that I have to be able to share them and then enlighten people as to how to do what I do and work in behind the scenes, which is why I established my second pakehi, which is called Engage. So it's engage.org.nz. And it is Aotearoa's first uh, government relations training platform to teach people how to do what I do. So we can get more competition and more people in this industry. Because the thing I think it is right now is that it's stuck in the mindset that it's a set of superior skills that only a small um, part of, uh, you know, part of the working public have and we should keep that locked down and for me that's fundamentally not what you have knowledge for you have knowledge to share and get more people learning how to do what i do and for me i think competition in an industry is a good thing because it forces the incumbents so the people who are in it like myself to be better demand better and offer better so To answer your question, what you've asked is one of the key things that I'm working on to make sure that we can get more lobbyists because I think it is something that we don't have enough of and I would like to see more. Great answer. Thank you. Thank you for your time, Holly. Enjoy the rest. Now, just one thing. Wait, before you turf me off. um, Go on. Okay. Henari Heki. So that is Henari Eggs. That is what the name of Toe's oh, um, business should be. <laughs> Not Urban Eggs. <laughs> it, it was his idea. He, he's done his thing. That's all good. Um, right. I will, I'll text him and say, Hinari Heki should be the name of your egg business. Would you like some, would you like some claps? No. Well, I was thinking about this. You really oh. do need to get the music going. Okay. The music's the, far the, better. I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> See you, Holly. Be good. Kakite. Adios. I'll give her some claps too because she's rad. Cool. Good session. All right. Uh, 
ladies and gentlemen, next up. Now, I'll give a quick context. I saw an article on stuff last week and it was flipping rad. And so I thought I'd invite um, the person who was about live to the show. Ladies and gentlemen, Guled Meyer. Is that how I say your name right? Did I say it right, Guled? Guled Meyer. Guled? But you said you Guled definitely Meyer. got the first name right. Yeah, yeah Guled Meyer, kia ora, bro. How, how are you, bro? How's things? Uh, good, 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 good. It's um, you know, it's been um, it's it's, it's been quite a, a a tough week with everything else that's been going on, of course. Um, but uh, it's 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 good to be here, to talk to you. Thanks for having me, bro. Of course, man. So on your LinkedIn it says here, Fulbright Scholar. So you're smart as shit. MPA Fellow. Mm -hmm. So you're also smart as shit. Cornell. <laughs> flex on him senior policy advisor co-founder of the third culture mind speaker and governance but you've had a flipping crazy little uh world so for those who aren't kind of aware in your story in a, in a quick little minute or so uh how'd you get you were born and then what happened <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a good way to put it you're born right yeah so um i i was born actually in 91 right at the height of the somali civil war i was born in somalia um i am one of nine raised by a single uh, parent. Um, you know, I was born right at the height of the civil war and at the age of two years old, um, me and my family were forced to become refugees. So we fled to neighboring Kenya where we spent some time at a, um, at a refugee camp there. And um, after a couple of years, when I was age six, we were lucky enough to have been uh, resettled into New Zealand. I just wanna also just note for our audiences that, um, you know, just to really put that into context, only 1% of the global refugee population are ever resettled into a third country. So that's, I guess, Jeez. how incredibly lucky that um, me and my family have been. What a crazy moment that would have been. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I think for me in many ways, I didn't really realize my own refugee background until I really came here because um, as a child, you're so innocent and, you know, your parents do so much to try and obviously keep you safe from all the crazy things that are happening in the rest of the world. So it really felt like a big adventure right up until we got to Hamilton, <laughs> where I definitely yeah. felt um, different for the first time in my life. If you're watching this right now, it's an articles on stuff from a sense of displacement to acceptance, and it is flipping a banger, mate. It's so rad cool imagery great story and then I, I read and i was like dude it's just it's just epic like i just love the hood to good shit man it's so awesome like and to just you wake up one day and you all of a sudden you're in a totally different spot and now like so where do you sit right now you obviously um you've got your, your fingers in a whole bunch of different pies what what's keeping you busy and how how are you how different is your world now man what's keeping you busy yeah, look, um, the truth of the reality is that there isn't much uniqueness about my situation in, in, in a way. Um, I think it's it's the story of so Are many former refugees. No, I will acknowledge, I will acknowledge it takes hard work. I will acknowledge it takes hard work and a lot of sacrifice. I acknowledge that. Yeah, but yeah. like I, what I want to say is that, you know, for many of us who come from my community, this is really um, the norm. You know, we mm. have almost, we're raised almost with high, it's, with incredibly high expectations that um, our parents don't really give us any choice to basically fuck up. Um, to be quite frank about it, because <laughs> totally. they've given you up can't. their entire lives. They've given up their yep. entire lives in order for us to live their wildest dream. So it's upon us to be able to hold that um, and to carry that mantle. So, yeah, I'm excited about this um, recent um, Fulbright scholarship and the opportunity to study at um, Corn Cornell University. Um, as you know, I you mentioned by you, I've got a background in public policy. Um, I am lucky that I've been able to serve and contribute back to this country that has given so much to me and my country, uh, to me and my family, and I'll continue to do that um, definitely in the years to come. So yeah, I've got my hands in a lot of pie. I've got my own NGO private uh, organization, charity organization, Third Culture Minds that I run on the side. I am a community advocate um i am involved in in, in, in so many things um, besides and beyond just the world of policy and academia and into community i'm passionate about helping shape a more inclusive welcoming um harmonious society this isn't a job interview mate you smacked that last minute that was great you're <laughs> on fire how do you feel what do you feel new zealand represents I, I think New Zealand represents um, a country that gives people a fair go. Um, 
and I think you know it is that value that really um, drives me in everything that I do. Um, uh, you know, New Zealand globally is, I've, and I've travelled you know quite extensively, and I've given international talks, and I've been to the UN, and every time we're we're seen as a country that stands far out from the rest. Um, you know, the images and what is portrayed of us is 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 very po is positive, um, and that's because around the rest of the world we're seeing so much intolerance we're seeing so much hate so much suffering um and 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 i and i think that often can make it quite harder for us to be able to talk about the very real challenges that exist here in our terror we are not immune and i think having those messages repeated to us again and again and again um can really feed the way for uh, creating a sense of complacency in all my work and everything that I do. That is what I'm trying to raise awareness about, that there is no time for complacency. We can't afford that. So if you um, were running the, the country, not as prime minister, <laughs> but as full just dictator of sprinkled us, like this shit's got to happen. What do you think is the most critical thing New Zealand should be doing at a macro level to be addressing the future for the next 500 years if you if you uh, were in charge uh, if I was in charge, I'd, I'd obviously, you know, I just want to acknowledge that there's a lot of things that need to be addressed um, and tackled head on. But for me personally, it's that issue of racism and discrimination. We need to be able oh, to tackle institutional on. racism head on. Yeah. Um, you know, we like to, um, I guess, compare ourselves to the rest of the world. Oh, we're so much better than Australia. We're not as bad as USA and we got to set the bar that low. Uh, we often forget that this is a country that has been built on the fabric of colonialism and 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 essentially um racist attitudes um towards indigenous people in this country so it's upon us to all realize the stake that we have and the responsibility that we all play in that part um you know i'd also acknowledge the fact that that isn't a role that is just for whoever is in charge of the day it's gonna require that collective um societal effort um and that includes also the private sector you know um it's not just a thing for government it's 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 about people it's about communities and it's about society as a whole when are you going to go for politics, mate? I flipping like oh. you. you're dope. Do you think that, do you feel that like you're a Kiwi or like how do you feel? So because I was younger, I was born in New Zealand, grew up in Fiji for a bit. He had to mm. travel around, but I've I've got to a chance to meet a lot of different people who have like been born elsewhere, but then are here. Like, like Mitchell Fam, good buddy. Um, you mm. know, not born in New Zealand, but it's full Kiwi. But at the same time, he's full. Mm. Um, you know, respects where he's where he's from. How do, how where do you where do you feel as home? That's a good question. By the way, a big shout out to Mitchell Pham. Um, He's somebody that I deeply admire and also a really inspirational person from the refugee community and what he has achieved. Yep. I would say I am Kiwi ass, bro. Um, <laughs> look, this is home. New Zealand is home. It's all I've ever known. Nobody can take that away from me. Uh, the truth of the reality is that in many times I'm um, and through actions and sometimes unintended sort of, I guess, microaggressions that occur in everyday circumstances, um, I am, you know, the idea, the stereotype is reinforced to me that I'm not really a Kiwi per se. Um, you know, for example, that question of where are you from? No, no, no. But really, where are you from? Yeah, Which yeah, is a yeah, very, yeah. very loaded question, you know? Um, yeah. and, and I get it that sometimes people are coming from a good place, a curious mindset, um, wanting to be able to get to know people and so forth. Um, but look, it's, yeah, I, I, I fit both. I'm, I'm proud to be a New Zealander, but also with that being said, I'm proud to be Muslim. I'm proud to be Somali. I'm proud to be former refugee and I'm proud to be black. That is all my identities and nobody can take that away from me. Shit, yes. Okay, so let's get back to the pressing question. So when are you going for politics, mate? I, I see, I see. Like, you get, so what? What's this MPS? This Cornell shit. So what you are? You're gonna go do that, and then you get like, like how does that happen? Yeah. Like how do you get that? So shit? It's, it's amazing. It's Thank you, bro. I really appreciate that. Um, so it's it's a master's of public administration. Um, basically, it's equivalent to a master's in public policy, right? Um, my concentration is in human rights and social justice. Um, and for me, it allows me to combine my years of working in public policy um, and in government agencies with, I guess, my passion and interest in, you know, I guess what I said to you before, which is helping shape 
a better world that I'd like to see our future generations to grow up in. Um, to combine those two interest areas, I'm interested in um, looking and learning more about critical race theory, which is a, a, a school of thought around how racism what? works and manifests. And it's called critical race theory. And it's a school, Jeez. it's a body school of thought. And it's about basically how racism works, operates, how it manifests. And I'm interested in applying that into the public policy context um, and, and to, to truly have a better understanding around, I guess, how race, the role that race can play in policy discourse development and implementation. Okay, so you're right there. Push it. So when you when you go into politics, <laughs> mate, this is great. Now, have you done a book? Yet? Have you need to do a book. I will have to sign you up as my promotional, uh, my my campaign manager, Robert. Matt, I I I real G's move in silence like lasagna. I, I help everyone on the on the scale, so no one knows exactly where I'm at. Oi, no, you got to do a book. You got to do a book. You got to write a book. Great story. It's flipping awesome. Thank you, man. Um, if, people, if people want to um, I, check out more more of your stuff, I mean, the stuff article is really cool. Um, uh, if they want to link up with you, see what you're going on next, where can they go to? What can they do? Yeah, I think um, people can, you know, search me up either on LinkedIn, Gulid Maya. Um, I'm also on Twitter. Um, I'm on Instagram. Uh, just, yeah, literally just Gulid Maya and that will come up in any of those platforms. Um, and, and, and I'd encourage people not just to really, um, I guess, learn and hear more about just my story, um, but the story of so many other New Zealanders who come from, um, you know, a range of diverse backgrounds that are killing it in every single field they're in. Awesome, bro. Um, appreciate you taking the time. I know we haven't met before, but I read the story, I saw the article, and I was like, "This is the dude's a flipping G." So I really appreciate your time, bro, and congratulations on all of it. Amazing journey, and um, looking forward to connecting up again um, when I'm when I'm back home, bro, for sure. Thank you, bro. You appreciate it. Claps? Have a good I'll give one. Give me some claps. Oh, you want, <laughs> Cheers, you my brother. The claps. You get choose. I'll, 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 give I'll, I'll okay. Give oh, me you claps. Want you, want music, you want music as well? Let, let's have, yeah why not let's have some music let's have some music to end it off there we go my brother thank you for the time man i appreciate it sure bro all right man talk soon all right, ladies dude. and gentlemen big g mate spoken like a politician too he's he's gonna be a weapon mate you what you flip and watch you watch i give it two terms and he's gonna be popping his head up again ready to fucking do damage what a great story i love shit like that it's so cool um so we had, last week we did the one minute pitch. Um, really cool, I loved it. Uh, this week I decided, you know what? We're gonna do two one minute pitches. Um, the first crew just didn't even turn up for the one minute pitch. So just rookie fest. But you know who is gonna turn up for the second one minute pitch? Ladies and gentlemen, how are ya? Hey, kia ora. Yeah. Would you like claps or music? I'll give you- Music, I'll you both. Claps. I'll music, both. <laughs> All righty, welcome to the show. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, what's 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 your name and what's your business, real quickly, and then I'll give you your one minute. Cool. Um, my name is Monica, and I'm Cedar, and we're from the Repost app. Mm -hmm. Oh, Repost. Okay, so where whereabouts are you? Where are you based? The beautiful Tai so, so, Gizzy. Gizzy. so I think that's close to home for you, isn't it? Shit, yeah. Welcome to the population twenty six. <laughs> Watch out. Okay, yes. you ready for your minute? Yeah. All right. Three, two, one, go. Imagine a world where everyday people like you and me share our thoughts and experiences online with our friends and family. And everything you share is owned by someone else. Someone else who uses your data to make themselves very rich. It's not hard to imagine. It's happening every day with social media. <clears throat> so here at Post, we believe in a world where all decisions factor in the well-being of people. Now, imagine a world where you can share online with your friends and family, where everything you share is owned by you, where your data is used to benefit you and your communities. That's the reality that we're building at Repost App. We collect well-being data from the community, aggregate it using machine learning technology, and provide this to our schools, workplaces, and government. We believe real-time wellbeing data will enable the leaders of our communities to provide the right support to the right people at the right time, making a positive impact for everyone. He tangata, he tangata, he tangata. Oh, you get some claps. There you go. Well done, team. <laughs> um, I love it. 
That was pretty good. It was like on the money. I was gonna, that was that was great. So where can they go to to check out? Where can they go to to check out more about? The um, you can find us at repost.app or you can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at repost app. Mm-hmm. And don't forget and we're on TikTok as well. Oh, and TikTok. Yeah, got to keep up with the time with children these days. <laughs> yep, very cool. And uh, but it's repost with an e. Is that right? Uh, R I P O S T E. Yep. So repost, yep. not repost. Yep. Repost. Repost, yep. repost yeah. with E. Uh, all right, appreciate it, team. Uh, would you like claps claps to, to, to go out? I'll give you some claps. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and were. some music. We'll just party on I'll our way out. Thank you so much for having us. Hey, okay, enjoy the East Coast. Woo, See you, team. Party did it. That was awesome. Repost app, R-I-P-O-S-T-E app. Um, keen to check out more of that. Very, very cool. Super cool. And from the East Coast too. Shit, yeah, they should have got two minutes because they're on Ngati Pro. Uh, spelling, William Rowland, um, R-I-P-O-S-T-E app, repost app, uh, a well-being measurement tool. Very cool. Uh, and I think the the uh, sweet. Um, and William says, cheer. Or cheer to you too, mate. Um, last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, good friend, Cassie Roma. Hello. Hey, happy Friday or Thursday for you. Have you gone for your run yet? I did a half marathon yesterday again. So today Jeez. is a rest day. You and the fitness. Oh my gosh, you're so gnarly. A friend of mine talked me into suits? a half marathon. Yeah, yeah. I have um, three pairs actually because you have to, you can only do so many miles and then Got you got to swap them out. Yeah, yeah. Um, how's the last week been winning? Definitely. This week's been good. There's light at the end of the uh, level three tunnel, so we're good. Uh, this week, Cassie, have you um, seen a couple of other guests today? There's a few good little banters in there. I have. Good I have. Some fantastic. Oh, my God. What a dude. <laughs> Whoa. Is such a G. He does not give a shit. He's genuinely <laughs> just sends it. When we first, when I first met that dude, because I'd obviously, I was a young buck on the come up, and, and I, I'd always seen him like, I wonder if what this guy's actually like, and it would have been yeah. maybe f- three or four years ago, I reached out to him and I said, look, you don't know me from a bar of soap. I just want to take you to lunch and have a chat. And he was just super accommodating, Sweet. didn't know me from a bar of soap, obviously paid for the lunch and whatever. It was great. And, and, and I just asked him all the shit that I would have, would have taken years to try and learn if you would have tried to play the game, opposed to just yeah. sitting with someone like him and just ask. And he just answered everything. And I got such an amazing insight to a world which i know is as i'm getting older i'm starting to care more and more about which which i should um because it's affecting yeah. me and then my family and everything else as well so um yeah but i just i love i love it when someone's in a role that shouldn't say things that they say and they just continue and just go for it it's so good i mean there's it's two so sides good. to that coin right we've seen what happens with that in the states oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah true yeah, fair um, so this week, Cassie, what has been the most um, important thing that's mattered for, for you and your world this last week? So definitely not anything political, but when I look back on the week and again, um, looking forward towards level two, spe- specifically for Auckland. Um, I don't know if you read it. Did you read the article on surge capacity that's been making the rounds this week? No. So surge Go capacity on. is um, it's the adaptive systems that all of us have. So um, it's it's a human language, but I'm I'm adapting it to to business. And surge capacity is the, like the short term um, adaptive skills that we have um, to like traumatic events, um, things that happen in the world really quickly, big um, like you could say earthquakes or things like that. Um, and this, the point of this article, I'll share it in the links later or in the comments is that we have these adaptive systems built into us as humans and we try to put them onto how we do business, how we go forward in life, what we look at brands. You and I have been talking about this for the last few weeks about how brands are pivoting or not. Mm. And surge capacity right now, we're out of it because it's a short term piece and we're going through a pandemic, which is an ongoing look at how we deal with anxiety and stress and how we just keep moving. So beautiful look into um, ambiguous loss and things like radical acceptance of where we are. And I don't know, I haven't read an article in a while that's made me cry, but I sat for like a good 10 minutes and went, oh, you could apply this to 
every part of life to parenthood, to business, to entrepreneurship, to politics. Um, so surge capacity and, and understanding how our bodies and our minds work within the world we're living in right now. Radical acceptance. You just said, what does, what does that mean? I think for a lot of us, it's different, but for me, radical acceptance is, is being firm and present in a moment and going, okay, right here, right now, what am I feeling? What's going on with my business? I know Holly talked about before businesses and, you know, was it 50% of businesses are making money? 50% aren't right now. Uh, ca- cash flow How negative. do you, cash flow negative. How do you radically accept where you are? Take a deep breath and then go, okay, next step, one step, one foot in front of the other, instead of having to sprint all the time like we're doing. So radical acceptance for me is, getting out of your head, getting out of your ego, getting out of the game. You talked about the game. It would have taken you yep. 13, 14 years to learn those things, but you went, actually the rule of my game right now is I'm just going to ask the questions. Can we have lunch? So radical acceptance can be a whole lot of things or, or one thing, depending on the moment you're in. So the radical acceptance part I'm interested in, because I think when you're just bouncing around and it's just, you're kind of reactive to others or the moment or whatever is happening around you, um, the acceptance is almost like a, a stop and pause for how you, so I had this idea for a thing called a defrag doc. Do you remember defrag? We yes. used to have to defrag your computer or break it away and reset it all. And the idea of this doc was the same way you have the Summon Cynic start with Y and then you have the Lean Canvas one pager. It was essentially a defrag doc where you could download and de- and compartmentalize your brain and your energy and your emotions into a structure of like, I'm fearful, like in this right now, I'm fearful of this is what I think it is. It's um, um, this maybe f- uh, physical, emotional, spiritual, blah, 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 and, and split it all out. And so you can kind of download, it's a it's a it's essentially a data dump of emotion, but with yeah. some type of structure for it, for that. And it's funny, because when you were saying that, I was like, it feels like that's exactly what you're saying. So stop and it's not just taking it all in, but actually having a process to figure out what's next, right? It's interesting. It's yeah, that's lot. right. And I, great. Oh, it's it's a fantastic, and it's a it's a short article, which is even better, um, with three really kind of cool steps for 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 looking at that ambiguous loss because that's what it is. It's not something where we've gone. There is a beginning. There's a middle. We can see the end. It's like who knows what's going to be happening. So we're in this this moment of uncertainty and unsureness. So it's how do how do we accept that? And I I think what you were just saying about the defrag doc. Um, as somebody who's been <laughs> to some very fantastic therapy in the past, that's exactly what we learned to do. You take different templates depending on the kind of speaking and therapy and counseling you want. And then you look at how you're feeling, what are the triggered emotions and how, how are you going to move forward like that? And I think the more we get into that place, Rebecca, and the more people have the language to be able to defrag, the better we are in business, the better we are in life, the better we are at mm. that radical acceptance. Um on the back of that, we were talking about, you know, uh, when we had Rob Fife on the show a while ago, he talked, because I was talking about, you know, um, B, B, C, A, C, like before COVID, after COVID, this, this sort of moment. And he said, yes, but there's a bit in the middle, which is during COVID. Right and now. But with this That's middle right. bit, is, which is, it's actually right now, is this isn't four weeks and it's done. This could be four years. This could be four months. Right. This could be That's two right. years. This could be whatever. And it's that kind of gear up. And, and Toe was talking about it before. He was saying, you know, he thinks it's going to be one, two, three, two, one, two, three, two. It's going to go up. Mm-hmm. And yesterday mm-hmm. I was talking to someone. I said, is New Zealand essentially going into a almost like a, a, a yo-yo economy of living or kind of like one of those traffic light stop goes? Yep. And it's like, oh, yep. level two, Oh, okay, level three, oh, you know, um, and it's just going to be an interesting way how everyone sort of um, approaches that moving forward. But it's quite cool to see these similar themes cross across all of it, right? Because yeah. this, this gap in the middle is, I think people mentally don't know how to, because there's no definite end yet. Everyone's kind of feeling like what, stuck in a little kind of mental vortex or something, you think? I know this this kind of second time around for us, this level three in Auckland has been a lot harder than even level four the first time because in level four we were like yes we can do this we can band together and now in Auckland we've had level three I know um, my daughter struggled more with school I've struggled more just mentally with um, what just what you just said is it going to be a yo-yo are we going to move up and down the, the levels we don't know and again that comes back to the whole idea of radical acceptance and why I loved the surge capacity article because it was like Cass be present be in the moment you actually can't worry about that. We can put some plans in place 
And every time we move forward, we can learn some coping mechanisms, but otherwise we just, we don't know what we don't know right now. We're dealing with a virus and luckily we have a, a government and a country that cares about humanity and puts humanity before profit, which is pretty darn cool. Do you, uh, finally, before we go, if, do you think if it stays yo-yoing between now and the election, it will change the, the, the public sentiment will change drastically or not that much? I'm not sure if it's going to be the COVID thing that changes public sentiment. I'm starting to see a lot of um, very Americanized, very pointed um, conversations happening on the social medias. You know, the news feeds are starting to feel a little bit yucky and gross. And a lot of it has to do, you can see some of the things that were happening in the States about six weeks ago, filtering in now, and you just go, ooh, feels yucky. So I don't know if it has a lot to do with, with COVID, really. Um, I just think yeah. politics is going to get yucky anyways. Agree. <laughs> just my little Cancerian heart. <laughs> I feel it all, Robert. I feel it. <laughs> Agree. Um, well, enjoy. you're not going to go for another run today, are you? Surely not. No, I'm heading. I'm heading off to a meeting now, my friend. Good luck with your meeting. Keep 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 charging. Appreciate your time as always. Uh, people want to check out um, uh, CR and Co. Where can they go? What can they do? Just check about a bit more of what you're up to. Uh, com or just look me up on all the socials at Cassie Roma. There you go. Love your work, Cassie. Uh, you, you want some? I know you want some music to. Oh, God, to you know it. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. I'm not going to get sued for this one. It's great. Elton needs his money. Elton's <laughs> Alden, got his money. Love you, Rick. See you soon. See ya. All righty. Good guest today. I like, so I, we made a pivot from last week. The pivot from last week was, um, is your music playing? There we go. It's Mellow Cruzy music to, to, to tie us out um, so last week we had the show and it was um, half an hour and it felt way too rushed it felt I was we were just jumping 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 this felt a lot more seamless and smooth and actually enabled the guests to have a bit more um, airtime and a bit chance to sort of breathe and roll it through um, the goal of these is to have a little bit more structure into it but also with sort of regular guests um, kind of getting the what's topical in the different worlds around politics and media and business and, and potentially more that's going to be coming down the line so uh, that has been very cool hope you've enjoyed the week level three almost um, out of the door coming down to level two very excited about that some stuff is bubbling which we can hopefully try and finally get out the door at, at too which would be great um and 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 yeah pretty cool actually so if you've if you like the any of the show so far with this format feel free to let us know uh we're going to be doing a one minute pitch again for next week um, if you want that there's going to be a link that i'll put below as well to do an application to um go for a one minute pitch for you and your business to be able to come any products and services or anything you want to sell absolutely go for gold and i think that will be us um Big thanks to sponsors, brightfire.co.nz, a whole bunch of cool business education content, media events and, and stuff, and also streamed through uh, switch.stream. Uh, switch.stream. Very cool. See you, team. Have a good one. Adios.